Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here as we work on the Scottish Claymore. Ladies and gentlemen, today this should be the last day. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to pull this out of the sodium hydroxide. Let's start polishing this up with some 2000 grit sandpaper. So I've used the 2000 grit wet and dry sandpaper, lots of water, and then of course I dried it off and used some oil to make sure that we protect it, stop it from rusting, and I'm just like, I, I'm so thrilled with how this looks. This looks insane. That split and forge welded tip just looks unbelievable. This is, this is crazy. This is, this, is, this is really, really cool. And I'm so pleased because uh, it's the Damascus that makes or breaks the project. And the great thing about Damascus, and, and, and I think part of the fun of it is you don't really know how well it's gonna go until the very, very end, just like that. And I'm so thrilled with this pattern, so thrilled with what I tried. Now, before we assemble it, it is time to sharpen this. Now, I don't often talk much about the sharpening on the blades that I do, because I'm often uncertain of how to best do it. But what I've found that works best for me is I take it to the belt grinder, and this is what I'm gonna do on this. I'm gonna start with 240 grit. That's gonna establish the secondary bevel right at the edge. Then I'm gonna go to a 400 grit Triazact belt, and then I'll either use a buffer or, and I tried this for the first time on the katana and it worked beautifully, I'll turn a belt inside out and I'm gonna charge the belt with polishing compound and I'm gonna buff the edge and hone the edge with the inside of a belt. Works great, <laughs> helps hone the edge. But on this particular one, I now have some 800 grit Trizact belts. So I'm gonna go 240, 400, 800, turn a belt inside out, charge it with polishing compound, hone the edge, and this thing is gonna be sharp as can be. Let's, uh, let's sharpen this bad boy. So I've done the 800 grit. That little secondary bevel is looking fantastic. And now what I'm gonna do, I find this so funny, but it seemed to work on the katana really lovely. Turn a belt inside out, put the belt on the grinder, get a good bit of tension. I'm gonna turn the speed way down and then take some polishing compound and charge the belt. Now, what is polishing compound if you're unfamiliar? So it's like a stick of, uh, you know, it feels like a stick of rubber, but what it has, it has very fine abrasive suspended in it. So when you put it on a belt, the abrasive in here is then gonna be able to very finely abrade away at it. And that, when we have the edge away from the movement of the belt, is then gonna hone the burr to hopefully get it sharp. Righty ho, so this should now be sharp. That'll work. Good enough for a Scottish Claymore, that's for sure.
So while I have been working on sharpening that knife today, Joe has been working on these shelf brackets. We're gonna put a shelf up here, in fact, two shelves. And he's been taking some 16 millimeter round. He's working three pieces in the fire at the same time. And as you can see, he is using two different punches. He's using one large punch, one small punch. You guys have seen me do this before. This is where you punch down with a large punch, that creates a countersink, you flip it over, you use a small punch, you pop out a little plug. Giving you a wonderful little countersunk hole that works just fantastically for screwing it into the wall or into the boards to hold the shelf. And he's doing a great job. Right, so now working on the final finishing touches of this project, I need to polish up the handle. I'm first gonna start off here with a steel wire brush. This has now been polished up. I started with the wire brush because there was some of the remnants of the super glue um, conjoined with my flesh from where I stuck my fingers and then had to rip the flesh off. But it's fine and we then went over here to the Scotch Bright mop and I'm thrilled with how it's looking, this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful bronze color. I'm so pleased that I picked the bronze and not the iron. It's gonna be a wonderful contrast. I've been stood here and uh, it took a little while. I've been, you know, five, 10 minutes of just thinking about the next step and thinking about where it is that I've gone wrong because I'm sure there is somewhere that I have messed up and I don't know what it is. And really, it's just me being in complete shock and awe that, like, that there is literally nothing else to do. So yeah, there's uh, really not a whole lot left to do. I've, I've got a beautiful guard. I've got a beautiful, beautiful handle, a beautiful pommel. We're here at the new workbench that Joe made. Look how strong this is. He made this in yesterday's episode. And uh, of course, he has been working on the shelves that are gonna be going here. Speaking of which, let's, ju let's just cut to that. And just like that, the shelf of power is complete. Oh, we did a terrible high five. My hands are pain. <laughs> awesome work, Joe. Look how great these shelves are looking. We got ourselves some wonderful, strong shelves. Got my new router up there. And of course, Joe's done a fantastic job of the bench yesterday. Joe, awesome job. I'm really chuffed with that. Let's get back to the sword. Well, okay, and we're back and... As I said, it's now time. We've got a beautiful sharp sword. Save cutting myself with this cut proof glove. Find my marks. One final dry assembly as everything goes on. How am I gonna do this? All right, it's tight as it is. It, it, it really is. It's a really wonderful fit up. I'm very pleased. I'm a little sad that I didn't go further with the wire there, so there is still some wood exposed. Aside from that, however, I'm just truly, truly thrilled with all of this and all I've learned from this project. Here's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna mix up some epoxy and I am going to epoxy the guard and the handle in place. I don't think it's strictly, strictly necessary, but what it's gonna do, it's gonna help bed everything tight. Once that epoxy is dried and it's all nice and tight, I'm then gonna slip on the pommel and I'm gonna drive down the pommel. The pommel is gonna have a friction fit. We're then gonna heat up the very, very tiny, tiny tip of the tang and hopefully be able to peen that down just a little bit once that's cut to the right size, secure everything with the pinned tang. Let's get to it.
damn that that is so sharp. The absolute worst time to cut yourself is when you have degreaser between yourself and the knife because the degreaser ends up in the cut that you just make. Don't be silly, kids. <sighs> All right, back to work. Great. I'm gonna let that uh, let that epoxy dry for a little bit. Then it is on to installing. Woo, installing a pommel. So we're just at the final stages of that gluing process. And what I need now is I need to be able to have a way to drive down this pommel without damaging it. Because of course, it's a nice tight fit. We want to drive down the pommel so it's bedded nicely onto the handle before we peen the tang. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of Delrin machining plastic. We're gonna throw it in here. I'm gonna make a little tool that I can drive onto the steel of the pommel without fear. Is that my blood? Yep, without fearing damaging the pummel. Righty ho, so that, let's see. Yes, this will work perfectly. Okay. There we go, beautiful. Now we drive it finally home to its final resting place. Didn't take as much as I thought. Now I've got to rivet it. This is gonna be daunting. Moment of truth. Gonna use this torch and a tiny little uh, welding tip there to get the smallest flame. I'm gonna take this tiny hammer and with light blows and taking absolutely as much time as it needs, I'm uh... <laughs> We're gonna gently clean this over. I've got a wet, uh, wet rag on the pommel there. It started to get a little bit warm. So that wet rag will hopefully help conduct some heat out of there. And this should hopefully be the last little riveting run. You can now hear the wet rag is already starting to sizzle as the heat builds up. This is a very tense moment because if I heat this up too much, I'm gonna burn the wood and destroy the nice fit up we have. So I have to heat just the tang and I also have to make sure that I keep working it hot. Otherwise the tang is not gonna forge and instead I'm gonna be vibrating the handle and making everything come loose. And there's very little time to do this because it will only move when it's hot. Time to cool off the pommel again. Just in case it's shifted in its uh, position, give it another little drive there with our Delrin plastic tool. Do a little bit. Go. Five, four, three, two. Geronimo, I think we got it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Scottish Claymore.
14 episodes again on this gargantuan project. The bronze wire wrapped handle, the forged steel guard and pommel, the pinned tang. I'm shocked. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If this is the first video that you've seen of this build project, make sure that you go back and watch part one. There's a link in the description below where you can start watching this entire build project. Go through the trials, the tribulations, the failures, the mistakes, the things I learned, and most of all, the fun I had, because that's what it's all about, ladies and gents. It's about having fun. It's about crafts. It's about making things, enjoying yourselves. So, most of all, after you hit subscribe, after you like, you comment, and you share the videos, please do get out to your own workshops. Get out wherever it is, whether it's in your kitchen, whether it's in your bedroom, make something. You're gonna love it. You're gonna have immense joy from it. The learning process is something that is, is, is truly something that gives me so, so much joy. Thank you, ladies and gents, for watching. I'm gonna see you tomorrow on our next episode, because that's what we do. We make stuff, we learn, we have some fun, and we bring you along the way. Thank you.